What's up everybody and welcome back to another video today of Cephalo and in today's video guys I am going to introduce to you the Titans of Cephalopods known as the giant squid and the colossal squid I'm so excited to show you guys these two Titans today. They're extremely bizarre and a little freaky looking I'll say but I'm so excited to show you guys this there's some some awesome information about these animals why well, i'm saying some because we don't know much about these animals so there's going to be uh, a small amount of information but it's awesome good information all right and also before we get into this video please slap that the, please slap that like button hit that subscribe button and also let's try and get 10 likes for this video today and let's just try for this channel to get a few more subscribers so we can get to 120 subscribers we are at 117 right now which is absolutely stunning but let's try and get to 120 and also hit that bell button right next to it and so you guys can get so um, notifications for future and upcoming videos and otherwise guys let's get right into our video of the Titans all right here we go guys the colossal versus the giant squid so about the giant squid so giant squids are scientifically known as the architutus ducks so in Latin or uh, Greek this is probably one of the coolest freaking names for squid archi means uh, chief or most important toothless squid ducks leader put that together you got chief squid leader or most important squid leader like how awesome is that it'd be called a giant squid leader or something imagine be calling that that'd be awesome so if you want a reference to a giant squid instead of calling scientifically or that one you could call it the chief squid leader how about that that's awesome and they are the largest invertebrate in the world. They can grow as big as 40 plus feet and weigh a few hundred pounds. Few hundred pounds meaning 300 plus pounds. They have the biggest eyes in the world, measuring up to 10 and a half inches, and the people being as big as three and a half inches. That's freaking amazing. And um, later on in these slides, I have a picture to show you guys of how big the eye is compared to a person. And giant squids live in the mesobathypelagic zone, which is 1,000 to 3,000 feet in the ocean. Meso meaning a twilight, bathypelagic meaning me, uh, midnight zone. So you can already tell from the twilight, just a little amount of sunlight is able to reach that depth. Then midnight zone, there's absolutely nothing. It is just pitch black. And so, here are some of the parts where squid have been... Um, washed up ashore so we got some on the coast here of the um united states um a lot of a lot of this uh too isn't just um where giant squids have been washed up ashore but also been where they are in the ocean so there are a lot on the coast of the united states which is actually awesome because i'm like right over here and got some all the way up here and down here near south of, uh oh my god i almost said south, south america wow south africa and here's an extremely awesome part for giant squids right here this is like the mother load of where giant squids are because new zealand has a museum um not a museum but aquarium with a fully displayed giant squid there and this display giant squid is in a real giant squid which is absolutely awesome i'd love to visit there one day and they dissected a whole bunch of giant squids over here and my inspiration the scientist steve o'shea who had a episode out um a few years ago called the colossal squid he's the one who dissected the colossal squid but not only just the colossal squid he's dissected uh, many of giant squid and he has he is known as the squid man which is absolutely awesome and he's just an awesome guy dissecting all this stuff and i'd love to meet him one day i would he, to me meeting him would be meeting like a very famous celebrity um so that'd be i would love to meet him one day the have a long conversation about him to giant squids and stuff and there also been uh, sightings of giant squids near Japan, which is really fascinating. And so in 2006, 
The first time Japan's National Science Museum and Japanese public broadcaster and the Discovery Channel caught and brought a 24-foot female giant squid to the surface. So, you guys can take a look at this for a moment. Just look how beautiful this squid is. And if you guys are wondering why there's so many like white patches on the giant squid, it's because it's all the way up to the surface. So, giant squids... They live in that twilight midnight zone where the pressure is extreme. And so their bodies are really used to that. But bringing them up to the surface uh, for a long period of time, their skin is going to decay because it's not used to that. It's going to um, thaw out very fast. And this is why it's so difficult for scientists to really uh, dissect a fully intact squid because once you bring them out, of water or bring them right to that surface they are it's like glass you just put a little something a little pointy on that it just breaks and when scientists uh, dissect these things uh, for long periods of time you can just take an arm or a tentacle and it just breaks right apart it's that easy and so um, that's why it looks like that and look at this too they use a squid a small squid to catch a much bigger squid like that what a cannibal and in 2019, so June 19th of 2019, this was the first ever live footage of a giant squid in its natural habitat, which is absolutely amazing. And this was a few hundred miles south of New Orleans. It's absolutely awesome. I love the, I can't imagine how awesome those scientists must have felt to be the first to capture this live. Like, I would feel. So amazing every day of my life after that to discover the giant squid in its natural habitat. And here's a quick little brief background of how they got this giant squid. So you guys see this little panel right here? Looks like a bunch of little light bulbs. That's actually what it is. So there's a jellyfish in the, I can't remember, I think it's about the, right in the middle of the twilight midnight zone, or more near the midnight zone, there's this jellyfish called the Atala. And inside, so pretend this is the hood of the jellyfish where it goes like that. Inside, there's just this blackness, but then there's this blue light that circles around. What it does, it brings in prey, it scares off prey uh, predators, or warns off predators, or it can bring in the predators. Now, what's really fascinating, if a predator is latched onto this atoll jellyfish, gnawing on it, it can use that light. And a bigger predator will catch that light and actually bring it in to catch the prey that is eating on it, the predator that's eating on it. It's really cool. It's a really awesome self-defense mechanism. And this is and this scientist, I don't remember her name, but she did the same exact thing to catch this giant squid. What a smart freaking lady to do that, using nature and improving that a little bit to catch in a giant squid. That is so amazing. I would just, that's absolutely awesome. I would just I would love to be there. I would love to have been there that day to see this giant squid. That would be amazing. I can't exactly remember how big this giant squid was. I think they said it was about um, 20 plus feet or a little bit bigger. But that doesn't really matter. What matters is that we have got live footage in U.S. water and found a giant squid. That's absolutely bizarre. And so let's talk about why giant squids have such huge eyes. So their enormous eyes help squids to actually pinpoint the predators, basically predators meaning sperm whales and prey. So if you think it's such a big animal, it's not going to have a predator. Yes, there is. It's the sperm whale. Sperm whales, the 60-foot huge just brick wall swimming in the ocean. These things are amazing. This is actually my favorite whale. And um, these things eat squids all the time. If you open, if you find one washed up ashore and open one up, you're just going to pop open full of squid beaks and um, squid rings, a bunch of amazing other stuff from cephalopods, really, the uh, octopus, squid. And they also let them really see good in the murky depths of the ocean, which makes a lot of sense. Well, then why would you not have big eyes if you couldn't see good in the ocean, in the depths of that ocean? You need big eyes to... Um, catch a lot of that light so you can see good in that murky depth. And so their diet, so giant squid's diet mostly consists of deep sea fish, other squid, not just other squid, but also themselves. So they're 
they're a cannibal, big cannibal, and they eat schools of fish in the deep. And what's really cool, how they uh, catch their prey is, so their tentacles are known as clubs. They're the ones that are longer, the size of their body, even longer. And so they can just kind of let those hang out. And what they do is if a fish latches onto that, it's going to be really hard to see in the dark. So there's once a fish latches onto that, it's going to bring it in. It's going to gnaw on it slowly, take pieces and eat it slowly so it can break that apart and eat it. And that's how it eats, which is really fascinating and really um, pretty interesting. It uses its tentacles as little lures, which is absolutely awesome. So here, ladies and gentlemen, is a picture of how big a giant squid's eye is to a human's eye. It's really cool. Now, just take a moment to look at this. That is an average-sized human face compared to a giant squid's eye. That's just an eye. Imagine a head. It's about the size of the whole entire body. That's not even counting the mantle. But just look at that. It's so awesome. And this is a, um, a lady who works at the Smithsonian Museum. And I've learned that Smithsonian has over 200,000 sp uh, specimens of cephalopods. And I would love to go there one day and then make a YouTube video to see all these amazing species. I would probably, I would probably want to be able to talk the whole entire time. I'd be like in a kid in a little uh, toy store seeing cephalopods everywhere. But just look at that. That's absolutely amazing how big the eye is. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to head into the distant relative, the colossal squid. Now, you guys can already tell the difference between a giant and a colossal. Colossal squids are huge and fat and look like a blob. Giant squids will look more fit, <laughs> but they're... Um, they're more uh, skinnier and definitely more aerodynamic. So about the colossal squid. So they're scientifically known as the Mesonwai Chototuthis Hamiltoni. Um, correct me if I said that wrong. Probably did. But I try to mess. That is a very big, confusing word. Um, or they're also known as the Antarctic Cran Squid. And I'll tell you guys why that has Antarctic in the front of it. And colossal squids can grow just as big as a giant squid, about 14 meters, which is about 42 feet. And, but they are a whole lot bigger in mass, as you guys can already tell from those pictures. And they can weigh as much as a thousand pounds or more. And just like the giant, giant squid, they both have the largest eyes in the world, which is about 10 inches in diameter. And colossal squids live in Antarctica, about 3,000, 6,000 feet below the surface. So they basically just live in the midnight zone where there's absolutely no light. And unlike the giant squid, colossal squids have suckers, but with hooks connected in the middle where they can rotate 360 degrees. And I'll get to that in just a moment, but I want to give you guys a little more information on how this colossal squid was discovered. So the colossal squid was first identified in 1925, and guess how it was discovered? From a sperm whale. They, um, there were two uh, arms of a colossal squid recovered from a sperm whale stomach. So sperm whales are pretty good. They're a little uh, helpers for uh, catching giant squid. You just op pop them open, and you find some amazing uh, leftovers of colossal and giant squids. And in 1981, a first whole giant squid was found near the coast of Antarctica. So you guys can already tell, these animals just live straight up in Antarctica. And in 2007, a colossal squid was brought on board on the fishing line boat near the Ross Sea near Antarctica. And this is where, this is it right here actually. And this is um, the colossal squid that actually Steve O'Shea dissected on, on this episode of Colossal Squid. And so, um, you guys have quite a little background. There's still, both of these animals are still absolutely mystery, um, mysterious to us because how deep they live. And that's just very hard for us to go down there because our technology, we can't get down there. Even though with all the technology that we have, we're still 
we just still can't get down there and know much about the giant squids. And plus, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack, completely black, and you find an animal that's um, 40, 50 plus feet long. So it, it's very hard to discover these animals. That's why there's not much information about them and why they're such a mystery. And here's our last slide. Before we end this video, I wanted to show you guys the suction cups of what the giant versus the colossal squids look like. And so let's just look at the giant squid. This one's um, really mean looking, but not as horrifying as the colossal squid. So they have this ring in the suction cup. Here you go. We already have that infundibulum here, acetabulum here, then epithelium here. But um, just lost my words. Apologize, guys. Um, but there we go. But like the octopus, they have that strong suction. But instead of that strong suction, they also add, and for the giant squid, a ring of chitin. So when it suctions on right up to them, these uh, rings will just latch right on. And when enough of these suction cups go into their prey, it is basically absolutely impossible for their prey to move once at all. And like what I said earlier, with those clubs, it brings her right in, just gnaws on it, and eats it. Then the colossal squid. This is just nightmares. It's extremely scary. Just see these menacing pointy hooks and so really you guys can see there's not really much of a suction cup here all that really is is just a hook and so when the colossal squid gets its prey hangs out this uh lures its prey with its clubs and so these hooks just go right into their prey and it's i can't imagine how much pain that would be they get caught by a colossal squid because these things will just go on you. and look at them you can already see they rotate it looks like they're in a soccer where they can rotate in which they are and so when that prey gets in distress and gets really um scared and doesn't know what to do so instead of just moves around it can't do anything it can do all it wants to move around but these these hooks will just latch right onto no matter what and just bring it in and just eat it and so ladies and gentlemen that is going to be end for today's video of our titans of the ocean and so i hope you guys really enjoyed it was absolutely awesome to um teach you guys about these magnificent beautiful horrifying animals and otherwise that's about it i hope you guys enjoyed and again, please slap a like on that button, hit that subscribe button, please, I absolutely appreciate that, and hit that bell button, and I'll see you guys on the next video, and have a fantastic day.